Hey, Shalom. Kahalai on Laya Ho by Shun Yahusha by Shun Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule it teach well. Much peace, love, and salutations to all the brothers doing this work in truth and in sincerity of heart. Shalom to you, brothers. This is the brother, young brother Batak, back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it be edifying. Okay, as you can see, before you I have the word obscurity, it says the absence of light. Lack of brightness or luster. It says condition of being unknown or inconspicuous. Darkness, gloom, vagueness, confusion, in insignificance. Darkness, meaning quality or condition of not being clearly comprehended. Let's see. The one that I'm looking for is darkness, man. The quality of being... Mm. Okay, it says the state of being indistinct or indefinite for lack of adequate illumination. So, all this is going to make sense. You know, once I get into it, obscure. It means dark, figuratively, morally, unenlightened, gloomy. Dark, clouded, gloomy, dim, not clear. So obscure means it's dark, it's not clear. It also can mean you uh, mentally or morally un, un, unenlightened, meaning you're not, you you don't have the light, so to speak. You know, you're not uh, morally enlightened. That means you don't have the truth, you don't have the word. But what we're going to focus on in for this lesson is the meaning dark, gloomy, because the Lord is going to also, the scripture says what? Gross darkness to people. So the people are in a dark, dark minded, in a dark state of mind. Look, got the jakes. Let me guess, they finna fuck with me. But um, the people are in the dark. They have a dark cloud about their minds because they don't understand the truth. They don't know the work. But the Lord is going to make it literally dark here in America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. So I'm going to get into this vision. Uh, that I had most recently and it was um it didn't hit me I didn't remember it until I was at dinner you know um eating and then it out, out of nowhere the spirit hit me and I remembered it out of nowhere I remembered the vision so basically this was the base of the vision I was in some house or in an area of houses not sure who house it was you know it's not very clear you know how dreams are and i was looking into the to the heavens and i seen things falling from the sky as a result from an emp blast if you don't know what an emp is emp means an electromagnetic pulse it is something that happens when a nuclear missile is detonated in the upper atmosphere of the earth causing Everything on the earth that requires, that has power or electricity to completely be destroyed. Cars will not work. Lights won't work. Power will be completely shut down. And everything that is in the skies concerning like airplanes, satellites, all of those things of the net, that nature will fall to the earth. They will come plummeting to the earth violently out of the heavens and to the earth and all i remember in my vision i was looking into the sky and i i noticed that there's a lot of things falling from the skies it's lucky that's a helicopter i hope it ain't making me uh you know, hearing me obsolete but um an example of that a helicopter and that's the spirit a helicopter in the sky if it, if an electromagnetic pulse was to hit America right now, that helicopter would fall to the ground violently because it got knocked off because of the, the computers and um, the things that are the, the technology that's in it is going to be completely shut down. It's going to be destroyed. So an EMP or electromagnetic pulse will clearly destroy all the technology everything would be destroyed and that's what i seen in my vision everything like planes satellites like i mentioned 
everything was falling from the heavens. And the people that I was with or around, I was telling them when, where the next airplane or where the next satellite or whatever the hell it was in my dream that was falling from the heavens and crashing violently to the earth, I was telling them where are they coming from and where the next one was coming from. Because you don't know exactly where these things are going. You don't know. So I was letting them know when the the, uh, the, the debris and stuff was close to us. I was letting them know when the debris and things were close to our dwelling place. You know, so I was calling it out and letting them know where the next plane was going to fall at, so to speak. Because it was crazy, man. This vision was intense. It was intense. It was real. It's like I was there. It's like I was in there. I was in the midst of this shit. Just watching all this stuff fall to the heaven, fall in the heavens, to the ground. And I did not know where the next item was gonna be at. Where the next thing was gonna fall at. So I had to keep watch. But that is the base of the dream. That's that's all that was happening. The whole time I was in the vision, I was in a dream, all I seen was things falling from the heavens as a result of from an EMP blast. And that made me. Remember that the Lord is going to bring darkness upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, you know. So let's go to a blue letter. I had queued up this word. Darkness means darkness, obscurity, uh, hints, the dark hints, darkness, literally misery, destruction, death. And that's what the Lord is bringing. That's what he's going to bring. He's not only bringing darkness, he's bringing misery. Uh, he's bringing death and destruction. Sorrow, wickedness. That's what's coming to, to this um, America. So there was a very, that's going to be a very dark day in America, Babylon the Great. Let's go, Amos chapter 5, verse uh, 18. It says, War unto you. War unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. So the Lord smote the old Egypt with plagues of darkness. And he's also going to smite America, Babylon the Great, with darkness. The same plagues that he hit the old Egypt with, he's going to hit the new Egypt with. <laughs> and even greater. Um, so let's read that in NLT real quick. Let's go. Amos 5 and 18 in today's terms. It says, warning of coming judgment. Right. That's what this is. It's a warning for, of coming judgment. Judgment. It says, what sorrow awaits you who say, if one, if only the day of Yahweh was here, ye have no idea what you are wishing for. That day will be, will bring darkness and not light. So the day of the Lord will bring darkness and not light. In that day, you will be like a man who runs from a lion only to meet a bear escaping from the bear. He leans his hand against a wall in a house and he's bitten by a snake. Yea, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of joy or hope. So that's what that's what we're warning you about. The day that is coming is not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be a day. It's going to be a day that people are going to suffer horribly, man. And if you don't want to be a part of that, you don't want to experience that. Because the scripture says the day of the Lord is for the evil, the wicked. It's not for the righteous. The day of the, the, day of the Lord is for the wicked, not the righteous, man. So if you're not right and you don't get your house in order, well, you will find yourself on the receiving end of judgment. You got to come back to the Lord. Come back to the truth. That means what? To repent. Repent means to turn, flee away. Turn back. Turn back from what? Your sins. And you know, turn back from your sins. Don't do it no more, man. Stop eating shrimp, crab, lobster, pork. Stop eating pork. Stop eating all the bull abominations that the Lord don't want you to eat. 
you know? So, let's see, gloomy, gloom. Zephaniah 1 and 15. Let's read that in the NLT. Zephaniah chapter 1. Let me see here. This is Zephaniah. I'm going to start at chapter 1, verse 12. I'm going to start at 12. It says, I was sent, I was searched with lanterns in Jerusalem's dark, darkest corners to punish those who sit complacent in their sins. Right. The Lord said he's going to search Jerusalem with candles. Now, what is the candle? This word. The, the, uh, this word is that light, that candle or that lantern that the Lord is using to search Israel out. So this, so that light, that candles is referring to this word, man, this truth, because the scripture says the law is a light, the commandments is a lamp, and the law, law is light. Let's get that real quick. That's the book of Proverbs six and twenty three. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the Lord is using the word to search Jerusalem to see to see to he, he's using the word to mark those who are his and who's those who are not his man act like this motherfucker's gonna hit me man anyways um so the Lord is using his word to search Jerusalem to see who's really right and who's not because that that is what makes us clean the Lord gotta wash us off with that word but if we're not right, if we're not right when the Lord visit our house, then we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. So the Lord is going to search Jerusalem with candles. Jerusalem is a, it's not talking about the land of Israel, even though that is the land, our land, Jerusalem. But it's referring to Israel because we are Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So we are Jerusalem. So we are Jerusalem. It says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So our people are going to be caught up in their sins if they don't repent. Right, this is F and I 1 and 13. And I'm going to start. I'm going to read verse 12 again. It says, I will, search with, I will search with lanterns in Jerusalem's darkest corners to punish those who sit complacent in their sins. Right. Those that don't want to repent. Those that wanna don't want to turn back. That's stuck on stupid. The Lord got a treat for you, motherfuckers. It says they think the will not will do nothing to them, neither good nor bad. And that's the point. They don't know the Lord. The scripture says the Lord is the one that causes good and bad to happen in the earth. Very simple. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. It says, verse 13, so their property will be plundered, their homes will be ransacked, they will build new homes, but never live in them, they will plant vineyards, but never drink wine from them. And that, that the terrible day that's coming is a lot of people's shit gonna get ransacked, man. You know, a lot of how people's houses are gonna be get ran up into because it's gonna be a day of what? Lawlessness. That everybody's not gonna care about the laws of the land. It's gonna be a day of darkness. A day of robbery. People are going to be robbing each other, killing each other, stealing from each other. There's going to be all kinds of wickedness going on. Verse 14. That terrible day of Yahweh is near. Swiftly it comes a day of bitter tears. A day when even strong men will cry out. Right. Strong men or gangsters, as they say. Thugs. All these tough guys out here. They're going to be, they, they're going to be overwhelmed in that day, man. 
it's going to be a very hard day for a lot of people because they don't they don't have that hedge of protection, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is our safety, is our refuge. Refuge is a place you run when you're in danger, man. And the Lord is bringing danger on the earth. Why not run to him? Jake running away from the Lord. They need to be running full speed towards the Lord, man. You need to be running to the Lord, not from him. Let your deeds be exposed. You sinned. You fucked up. Repent. Turn back from that shit, man, because it's not fucking worth it. The Lord is merciful. He will forgive, man, if you do it in truth and sincerity. But Jake's stuck on stupid, man. They're not going to get it. They're not going to open their eyes. The Lord going to keep them in that dark state of mind and that keep them in darkness until he fucking judge these niggas, man. They deserve it, too. It's lucky. Let's get on. Uh, it says, bear with me. I'm kind of <laughs> walking right now. Might be breathing a little heavy. Verse 15 says, it will be a day when Yahweh's anger is poured out. What is that? Righteous anger. Indignation. What's the word indignation means? Righteous anger. Righteous anger towards who? His inhabitants. Jerusalem. His people. That are worshiping other gods. They giving the praise to another fucking another god. They they acknowledge other gods. They don't believe in him. They're rebellious. So guess what? He got a treat for you niggas, man. He got a treat for you. The day of evil is gonna treat you, man. It says, a day of terrible distress and anguish. A day of ruin and desolation. Why? Because uh, ultimately America's gonna be burnt completely with thermonuclear fire. Completely. Completely, man. Everything is going to be burnt over here. And if you don't get right with the Lord, you don't repent, acknowledge your heritage, acknowledge your sins, then you're going to be right here in the middle of that, man. You're going to be right in the midst of it. Burning up. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and, and blackness. A day of trumpet calls and battle cries. Down down go the walled cities and the strong battlements because you have sinned against Yahweh. I will pour, I will make you, you go up around like the blind. Your blood will be poured into the dust and your bodies will be, will lie rotten on the ground. So this is what we're warning you about. This is what the prophecy says that is gonna happen in the last days. This has not happened yet. Daniel chapter 12 and one tells you about a time that's never before. So this is in the NLT, you know, making it very plain as what is going to happen. It says, um, this is verse 18. Your silver and your gold will not save you. And on the day of Yahweh's anger for the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. He will make a terrifying end of all the people of the earth. Right. So he's not going to destroy all people. <laughs> A lot of people in Babylon the Great will be gotten rid of. You know, they will be gotten rid of, but they will be come back. They will be reincarnated. They will come back. And after Esau, Edom serves a period of a thousand years in slavery, he will be gotten rid of completely. He will be eradicated. He will be extinct. That's what the Lord is going to give Esau because he have done to his people. So the Lord is going to kill a lot of people. The scripture says the slain of the Lord shall be as... In that day, from one end of heaven, even unto the other. Let me see. Slain of the Lord. Let me see. Type in heaven. It's a scripture that says, the slain of the Lord shall be as that day, from one end of heaven, even to the other. Something to that effect. Hmm. Bear with me one second while I attempt to find this precept. I believe it's in Revelations. If I'm not mistaken. Nope, not Revelations. Amos 4 and 10. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your courses. I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Ye have not returned unto me, said the Lord. <coughs> That's not what I was looking for. I forget what that scripture says. The slaying of the Lord shall be as that day from 
one end of heaven even to the earth or something like that even to the other end of, of heaven let me see uh because the lord is going to kill a lot of people man here it is jeremiah 25 and 33 it says and and yeah and and the slain of yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth they shall not be lamented neither gathered nor buried they shall lie they shall be as dung upon the ground so you know what dung is look it up it means shit so feces what comes out of a uh, human's rectum that is what it's going to be that's what's going to be how you, these carcasses which is our bodies dead bodies are going to be laying on the face of the ground and nobody's going to bury them Nobody's going to bury them. Nobody's going to be crying for them. It's going to be a lawless, wild society, man. And we're seeing it before our eyes, man. So the slain of the Lord is going to be many. The Lord is going to kill a lot of people, man. And that's what the world don't realize. Let's see. Isaiah 66. Let's see what it says in the NLT. 66 and 15 and 16. It says, see, Yahweh is coming with fire and with his swift chariots, and, and his swift chariots roar like a whirlwind. He will bring punishment with the fury of his anger and the flaming fire of his hot rebuke, which is going to be what? Those chariots bringing hot fire upon you people, man. They're going to be turning people into powder. Not only that, uh, the nuclear destruction is going to be burning people. It says, Yahweh will punish the world by fire and by his sword. He will judge the earth and many will be killed by him. Now, what does that mean? Many will be killed by who? Yahweh Bahashim Yahusha. Because it's the day of his judgment, man. The Lord is going to use Esau to come down hard upon all the inhabitants of the world. Because if they don't want to take his NWO, they're going to be riding Esau's crosshairs. He's going to kill him. The Lord is going to the Lord is going to unleash Esau out here, man. You know? Jeremiah 25 and 33. It says, In the day, in that day, those those in that day those yeah the lord has slaughtered will fill the earth from one end to the other no one will mourn for them nor or gather their bodies to bury them they will be scattered on the ground like manure which is you know same thing as um feces that's how um I, these people are going to be laying on the ground man they're going to be like dead bodies just laying on the ground nobody's going to bury them man you know so this is a part of prophecy. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Let's see what that says in the NLT. Let me see. Daniel 12 and 1. It says, At that time, Michael the archangel, who, guard, who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish, greater than any since, greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Right. Talking about the elect. The elect that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai will be rescued, man. So that's gonna that's gonna that's coming a time that has never it's like no there's never been a time like this on the earth, man. Never. And it's gonna come down upon our people. It's gonna come down upon our our people and the whole entire world. But what the scripture says. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord, which is who? Israelites, man. Judgment is going to begin with us. Uh. Judgment is going to be begin with Israel, man. So, um, I believe that's. I believe I got the point of my lesson, which is referring to the darkness that the EMPs are gonna bring. America's power grid will be shut down. The cars will be shut down because the majority of the cars here in Babylon the Great are run off computers. And if a, a EMP, like the trucks, semi trucks are run off computers, uh, everything is damn near run off a computer. So it's easier to control. For Esau and it's easier for him to destroy it and manipulate it you know so the day of the Lord is coming 
it's a day of darkness and gloominess. Oh, wait, let me see. Uh, Book of Joel, Joel chapter 2. Let me see what that says. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Where's Joel at? This must be. Oh, oh here it is. Joel 2. Start at 1. Okay. Joel 2 and 1. Bear with me. It says, Sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Rise the battle cry on my holy mountain. And that's what the elect are doing. The men of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord, they're sounding that alarm. Because what does that alarm do? It gets you prepared for uh, battle. It lets you know something is finna happen. You know, there's a law on that. You know, that that the sound of that trumpet, it's the sound of a, uh, it's the sound of a uh, battle. If I'm not mistaken, it's a warning to our people. When that trumpet is blown, then you know danger is finna come. And that's what the elect are doing. They're blowing that trumpet. It says, "Let everyone tremble in fear, because the day of Yahweh is upon us. It is a day of darkness and gloom." A day of thick clouds and, and deep darkness, right? The Lord did the same thing to uh, uh, the old Egypt. Gloom. It says, uh, let me see. Uh, gloom, 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 gloom. Sense of darkness, obscurity. Now, I got that word earlier. In record, which is gloom. Cloudless. I'm not sure if I'm having this one. Cheerless heaviness of mind. So gloom is basically darkness. A state of partial or total darkness. A feeling of malachony, apprehension. An atmosphere of depression and let's look at this word. Malachony. 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 Here it is. Mental disorder characterized. By sullenness, gloom, irritability, salakia, and posterity to senseless and viol uh, violent anger. Black bile. So, let me see. A feeling of thoughtful sadness. Characterized by or causing expressing sadness, grave or even gloomy in character. So that's what that's what that day is gonna cause. A lot of people are already in a, in a depressed state, but even in that day, it's gonna cause them to be even more in that in that sorrow state of mind. We're gonna be the the elect, the men of the Lord are gonna be rejoicing, man, because that day is here. Okay, so. The word also was used in Middle English for sorrow, gloom, a gloomy state of mind. That's what the people are going to have. They're going to be in sorrow. They're going to be brought low because everybody in the Babylon the Great has a proud, men a proud mentality. It says sullen, gloomy, sad, affected by low spirits, meaning excessive or sadness, excessive of sadness. So a lot of people are going to be in that state of mind. They're going to be in that, that depressed state of mind because of all of the calamities and all the things that are going to be happening on earth. They're going to be losing loved ones. They're going to be losing uh, family members. The world is not ready for none of that, man. They're, these people are not prepared. That's why the Lord is preparing his men right now. That's why the men of the Lord are coming back to the Lord. They're getting mentally prepared for what's going to go down. Because if you're not mentally prepared, then you already have weight. You already losing the battle. It's like you got to get prepared for war. You got to get mentally prepared. You got to prepare your mind to lose. You might be losing friends. Anything can happen. So you got to prepare your mind. If you if you prepare your mind, then you're halfway there, man. You know? Okay. Um. What was I at? Oh, I, was, I wasn't going to go with Joel chapter 2 verse 2 again It says It is a day of darkness and gloom A day of thick clouds and deep, deep darkness Suddenly like dawn spreading across the mountains A great people A great and a mighty army appears 
nothing the light has been since it has been seen before or will be seen ever again which is referring to the army of missiles that army is talking about missiles so that's those missiles are going to be launched onto the to the ends of the world which is to the west america babylon the great because that's the judgment of yahweh bashim Shah upon america babylon the great and esau so um with that man lord willing his brothers edified with this lesson you know what real quick modern warfare 2 emp scene i'm finna show you this was a video game that i played um a while back um it's a video game but it has you know it has what happened it happens during the EMP strike so just bear with me I know it's a video game but it has it has real life situations in it here are your free games it'll Prime show you in November 2022 here about an EMP so I'm about to use my mic Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition an Earth lost this is ISS control Houston's requesting a feed from your helmet cam. Copy that, ISS. Video feed. And we're not scared. Houston, this is ISS. <laughs> So um, I know this is a video game, but the point is, this is an example of what happens during the EMP strike. As you can see, you know, all of the helicopters, the jets, you know, satellites, everything started to fall from the sky. And this is um, a, a, a great example of what what happened during the EMP strike. And this is a great example of what I was seeing exactly in my vision. You know, something similar to this, but, you know, that the point being, it's the same concept, you know. It's the same concept. It's the same thing happening. It's the same shit. Different toilet. You know, so with that, man, Lord, brothers, Lord willing, you brothers edify. You know, Lord willing, this, this lesson is edifying to you brothers, man, who need to hear this. Or sisters, you know, that need to hear this. You know, the day of uh, EMP attack is imminent. And it will completely cripple the society known as America. So with that, I'm going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone ruler who rule and teach well. Most peace, love, and salutation to the brothers and work and truth is the city. Shalom. Lord willingness lesson was edifying. Till next time, we'll say shalom.